I'm Margaret Ann Windsor. That's my real name. Uh, I have to use the name Peggy Ann Dempsey Childers. This is the fourth video, and I won't put up another one. I'm going to uh, connect this one and let it go. This is the only photo I have of my mom, and they have changed the photos. By the way, if you if you follow these four, I want to go back and say this. Uh, when I found out my real name in 83, late 83, after I'd been in a political campaign, um, well, let me, I, I won't go, yeah, yeah, I do too. I want to go back to uh, Anita O'Keefe is my aunt. And I found a photo, uh, it's missing like a lot of other things, uh, and I can't take all of it with me anyway. I have to move around so much. But they'd been stolen. It, it was a photograph of Anita O'Keefe, my mom's sister, Georgia O'Keefe's sister. Uh, Georgia's my aunt. There was a photo of her in Palm Springs at a polo match. And sitting at the table with the umbrella and everything was, guess who? Wallace Simpson, the lying spy American that married the imposter and was supposed to be my father and became the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Absolute lie, absolute takedown. My father was married to my mom, Claudia Ruth O'Keefe. Now then, what are the chances is there's a photograph taken, published in a book that I did have of my aunt Anita O'Keefe and uh, this woman who's supposed to have married my mom. Remember, Anita's sister's my mom. I mean, we look like Anita could t tear her eyes out. Let me put you that. That was plain to see, the body language and everything. So anyway, I'm going to go from there. I'm going to go back to, I did the book, and I uh, didn't find out about my real name until 83. Uh, so I'm going to go back to, got a letter from the FBI, June the 23rd, 79. April Fool Day of 80, because this is what this has been, that they could kidnap a monarch. And this is my dad, a beautiful man, Edward VIII. A seal was put on it. This is the O'Keefe. Genealogy. So I'm the legitimate heir, Victoria II, to the British throne. Elizabeth is illegal, her father illegal, they're war criminals and should be tried. Instead of living this luxurious life and giving, pretending to be nice and giving away um, Great Britain, that's what they did. Now, I want to go back to, they put antifreeze in, April Fool's Day of 80. I went to the emergency room because I knew I was gone. Uh, if anybody has ever experienced that, they know I live in hell if they made it through it. By the way, I saw on 48 Hours or one of the NBC or, or one of them, uh, Dateline, is 48 Hours or Dateline, uh, they did a story, I believe it was, or Forensic Files, I can't remember, about Cobb County, right, not too long after uh, that happened to me too many years, there was um, a, a Cobb County cop or, or Marietta Policeman one, he's in Cobb County, that um, their ex-wife or their wife killed him with antifreeze. Then there was another one that uh, was connected to Cobb County, law enforcement, rescue unit or something they did a story on. Same thing. Uh, uh, I believe it was Forsyth County, but they lived in Cobb. It connected in a way, and antifreeze was used to kill them. I should not have walked out. I went to the emergency room. They were waiting on me. And Lana Dempsey, the woman who killed her twins, where they took me when they kidnapped me in 41 to Moulton, Alabama, and she had killed her twins, Peggy and Carl Dempsey. They were born out of wedlock. I did not find out until I was old. After I'd been in the political campaign and flown out to Larry Flint, the person who shot Flint was programmed. I was writing about mind control and uh, ability to um, cure illnesses or create them. It's the Tesla file that was stolen back in the early 30s, etc. And there's lists of these. The press won't print it. 
because they're controlled by the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, the same people that kidnapped me. By the way, Hillary Clinton is a member, and you know her husband is. By the way, her daughter got to go to Oxford, and so did um, her husband, Bill Clinton. And they went over there and gave away Northern Ireland. Uh, and uh, can you believe this? They're swan sitting over here, and they're uh, torturing the hell out of me and my kids, and look what they've done to Great Britain. So now I want to get back to this. I should never have walked out of the, uh, if you call that a hospital, it was, um, um, well, I said it a while ago, now that I'm getting ahead of myself trying to get this up before it goes out, off again, the video, the 10-minute video, uh, West Paces Ferry, owned by Hospital Corporation of America. Now, then, the doctor there at the emergency room was waiting on me. He was not on the staff, never supposed to be there. I didn't get to leave. Lima Dipsy, the uh, person who killed her twins, who I had to call mom, although I didn't at times, as bad as they beat me, I stood up and told her, you are not my mother. So something I knew way back then. So anyway, she was there, and um, I, I, they knew it was going to happen. It was all planned. I want to get some doctor's name, Beecher, in case he's still alive. I hope and pray there's a God. So he can make these people pay. A British lady saved my life. They told me if I tried to leave, first of all, I didn't have any money on me. I couldn't make phone calls. This is supposed to, I didn't go there voluntarily. I went for a top screen to see if what it, whatever they gave me could be diluted. Instead, they were waiting on me. Dempsey had showed up in Atlanta. That's a four-hour drive. She knew it was going to happen. My husband was out of town, her ex-husband. So anyway, I, it's a horror story what happened there. They threatened me if I tried to leave, they would have an intern, male intern, force feed me Halidol. Let me ask you something. If you were given something like this that would kill you, it's the total opposite of anything. First of all, I went there for a top screen. None of the... Uh, it, when you admit someone, none of those tests, nothing was done. The urine, they did do a urine uh, when I went in, and they later said it became contaminated. It stood out and became contaminated. How's that? There was no physical given me. The normal routines they have to abide by were not done. It was a horror story what they did to me there. And if you've ever had antifreeze put in you, you know it's a living hell. And I knew I was going to die. Uh, finally, my ex-husband come back. He never been to California. He suddenly comes back. Well, he's a part of the mess. They took me. He took. He did remove me from there. By the way, they did another test, urine analysis, and I knew what they. They had come in and stuck me in this arm. In the middle of the night, a, a white girl, it's real quiet in the morning, by the way, a white girl and a black man, and I remember them saying it was dark. There was another woman in the room with me. By the way, she went missing after then. She told me the next morning I had tied myself with a sheet to keep from screaming if enough hadn't been done to me, whatever they gave me. She, they left the swab in there and the blood in the uh, tape. When they brought that cleaning uh, catch me do another one. The first one became contaminated. Well, I made sure that one was contamina contaminated because by God, I knew then I wasn't coming out of there alive. They were trying to kill me. Um, no doubt in my mind. I put the toothbrush with toothpaste. I put the swab with the blood down in it, and I did it around like this and made sure it was, and I gave them the clean catch back. And you know what? When my ex-husband came back and removed me from there, and Dr. Beecham sat there, he looked at me with a grin on his face and said, by the way, the last one, uh, urine analysis, came out clean. I just told you, it was a living hell, and they, they were going to have a male intern uh, hold me down and force-feed me Halidol. All right, I'm, I'm going to skip what happened then on Easter. Well, what happened, my ex-husband took me to a rich one on my doctors. 
Ridge Crest Ridge something. One night I stayed there.